Welcome everyone. This is now our second uh, session. In this second session, um, we are going to look at uh, the fact that uh, evaluators need to be uh, in the know about uh, the health programs and how they, are, uh, they were planned or uh, they should actually participate in the plan of the health program. So um, evaluators are not individuals who are just brought in to evaluate a given program, but it is also necessary that they are actually uh, involved in the uh, initial stages of uh, program design. So uh, in this presentation, we basically we are going to focus on how health programs uh, uh, are planned. Um, in our first presentation, we looked at the fact that uh, health programs are all those sustained activities uh, uh, to improve uh, any organized, systematic, or even structured efforts or activities to improve uh, health outcomes of populations, the ones we termed as health programs. Um, and we also uh, noted that uh, projects are different from programs. Uh, projects are part of programs. Uh, projects have a time limit where a given product or service has to be uh, delivered. So <clears throat> we want to use the, the health pyramid to, to guide us in uh, looking at the nature of uh, health programs or services that um, we can implement. Okay, uh, so it we have the, uh, this pyramid with uh, a wider base and uh, a tipping uh, tip. So uh, we have what you call infrastructure services at the bottom, followed by the the, the population-based services, uh, enabling services, and indirect healthcare services. Um, the reason as to why uh, infrastructure services are at the bottom is that they are they have a wider implication on the population, uh, and also they require uh, a lot of resources uh, to implement. So that's why they are at the bottom. So as you move up, the impact uh, of these services yeah, is narrowing down uh, to individuals. For example, individuals who are receiving uh, services directly from the, the, uh, from service providers or health workers, um, the impact is, is narrowed to that individual patient who's receiving the, the services. So we are going to look at each of these uh, direct services is when there is, there is an interface for, or when a patient is actually meeting a service provider uh, or health provider. It can be a doctor, physician, midwife. Uh, it can be a nutritionist. Okay, that's when you're providing the service directly. It can be a counselor, okay? Or it can be a pharmacist in the pharmacy uh, services. Okay, so uh, the enabling services are those that uh, are related to health that they don't directly, they're not directly offered, okay? But they enable uh, uh, the, the, the population or individuals uh, to actually stay, stay healthy, okay? So for example, if you have a, uh, uh, child care centers, if you have nutrition programs, uh, or if you have community-based uh, management of uh, HIV, these are programs that actually uh, keep people healthy uh, and, and preventing them to, from reaching uh, that stage of actually interacting with, uh, uh, with the physician, the nurses, and, and other direct uh, uh, health providers. And then population health services are those that are aimed at improving population health. Uh, for example, immunization, supplying clean water, 
and making sure that people uh, people have uh, safe foods. Uh, okay, those are examples of uh, population health services. And then the infrastructure. When we talk about infrastructure, we talk. We think about roads. We think about the the the, the, the buildings of the health facilities, uh, the hospitals. Uh, I'm talking about the general security of the of the country, the economic, uh, the social economic infrastructure generally. Um, issues to do with laws and policies and planning. These are infrastructural uh, services. So that means that um, um, if you're going to provide, um, if, you, if, you, if you have an organization that wants to provide health services, then it is actually very, very important that, uh, uh, that they make a decision on uh, the nature of services that have to be uh, provided. <clears throat> Okay, so planning is very important because you, you will understand how to address uh, health problems uh, of uh, a given community. So uh, when planning uh, for any health program, it is very important to take note of uh, the following. One is that uh, a needs assessment needs to be done. This is to identify the health problems and health needs of a, a given population. This data can be collected using a variety of ways, uh, surveys, interviews, focus group discussion, or even analyzing data that has already been collected. And then you need to decide on the objectives of the program. They have to be smart. That means that they should be specific, achievable, timely, and, and be realistically achieved, and can be measured. The other principle is that um, after identifying the needs, then you need to address these needs. And therefore, you need to choose the appropriate strategies that you have to use. It is very important that you utilize data uh, or evidence, um, current evidence, to, to decide on which uh, strategies and interventions are actually uh, effective. You need to understand the, on the local context and, and what the target population, the nature or the characteristic of the target population, and what their input is uh, in planning for that uh, intervention. And then you need to now develop uh, a logical framework, which is basically uh, a framework that lists the, 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 the objectives, the activities, inputs, and outputs and then uh, outcomes and assumptions that you make. Uh, it helps in visualizing the whole program and how it will result into the, the needed uh, outcomes. And then of course, you need to look for resources to implement the program. Uh, so you need to look at the financial, the human and material resources that are needed. Uh, it's also very important to, after identifying those resources, you need to budget, uh, draft a budget, and start looking for these files, that is resource mobilization. So let us look at this assessment. Uh, you are basically going to conduct what you call a community needs assessment. Uh, you need to first understand the population, collect the data about this population. We can call it a community uh, or specific uh, uh, group. The purpose is generally to get data about the health problems, and then uh, you can now decide on which health problem to to uh, to address and and then how. So, a community generally uh, can be a group of people who are staying together in one place or people who are basically uh, interacting with one another. They have basically shared values and culture. So depending on the nature of a uh, program that you will actually put in place, uh, the program can be called a community-based program or community-focused program or community-driven program. Um, a community-based program 
is a is a is a program that you are providing within that community. Okay, and then a, a community focused program is the one which actually uh, focuses on impacting the whole community. And then <clears throat> uh, a community driven program is one where the community itself is the origin of the program. Okay, so depending on the nature of program that you have, you can uh, term it uh, appropriately. Okay, so there is usually not a clear boundary between those. Is the, it is not very easy to have a strictly community-based program without an element of community-focused or a community-driven without being a, a community-focused or based. So there is always an intersection uh, in the programs. So the needs that you want to assess within the community, uh, you have what you call expressed need when the community reveals to you that they have this need. And then you have what you call a normative need, which is basically that um, there, is, uh, there is a benchmark, like there is a standard reference uh, for a particular need. And then uh, that community perhaps lacks that. Okay, or, or uh, has a deficit in that. So, for example, if we have, if we talk of every village having a borehole, and then one village does not have a borehole, that is a deficit. So that is a normative need. Or if two uh, two boreholes are supposed to be uh, in 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 one village, and then uh, a village is having only one, so there's a deficit of one. And then there's what you call uh, perceived need. Okay, so you have two boreholes for every community, but the community feels like there's still more need for another borehole. Okay, that is a perceived, uh, uh, a perceived need. They, they feel like they lack, or what you call, you can just call it a uh, fair lack or uh, a given service or program. And then a relative uh, need where uh, there is an identified gap in comparison with others. Okay, so if we are talking about uh, having uh, midwives, one village is having 15 midwives and then the other is having uh, only five midwives. Then we, when you look at this uh, by compare or by comparison, you run into five that uh, in the other community there is, uh, there is lack. Um, so how do you conduct this community needs assessment? You can use different models, the epidemiological model, public health model, social model, or the asset model. The epidemiological model focuses on describing and relating uh, health problems uh, by one, a descriptive epidemiology. You describe, describe who is having what problem where, okay, and when. And then the analytical epidemiology looks at uh, uh, the 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 one part, okay. Uh, the, 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 what is the association between uh, a factor or an outcome with the uh, with an exposure? Okay, that is analytical uh, epidemiology. So the public health model focuses on quantifying the health problem for purposes of uh, looking at uh, which problem can we prioritize given the risks, I mean, given the limited resources that are available. And then social perspective, uh, looking at the fact that um, uh, we have social cultural factors that contribute to uh, health uh, or that con that actually affect health outcomes of individuals. Uh, so these are not only social cultural, but also economic political uh, factors. So quantifying these factors is actually very important because they have overall impact on, on health. So you can go with that perspective, uh, social, uh, social economic factors, political context, uh, economic context, these are very important. And then looking at the, the assets of the community, uh, what, what resources are available? Um, what, are, what are the abilities 
of uh, the individuals in a given community, asset strength and things like that. These are very, uh, very key. I mean, sometimes you are interested in understanding uh, what is happening uh, in a given community at uh, uh, when you, you have limited time. So you conduct what you call uh, rapid assessment and response. You want to understand what is going on and then implement a program uh, very fast. So that is the rapid perspective. So the assessments that you can do uh, can be familiarization assessments uh, where you are basically, uh, you, you want to know uh, what the problem is. You want to gain knowledge about the problem such that you can have a starting point that is the familiarization uh, assessment. Organization assessment, if uh, if you identify an organization that intends to implement a given program, can it be able to implement the program given the strength and weaknesses that it has? And then the market assessment uh, is when you want to understand to the extent to which uh, a target audience is actually interested in the health program. And then the needs assessment, what are the gaps uh, that exist within a given population? Uh, uh, having clearly uh, defined uh, the specific health problem that you're dealing with. At the level of uh, the infrastructure, you want to know the, the workforce that is actually available, such that uh, you, 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 you can actually plan in accordance to whether you need to bring people from another uh, locality. So basically, uh, for you to conduct uh, an assessment, you need to engage the stakeholders, conduct meetings with them. Uh, but before that, you actually need to understand the, com the nature, the, the actually the, 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 the familiarity assessment gives you an understanding on the community that you're going to work with. And then identify the key stakeholders, have engagements with them, and then start data collection, analyze, come up with a report, and then identify the problems that you need to address, and then implement a program. Okay. Uh, in this presentation, we have a link to a presentation on how to engage uh, the community. <clears throat> so thank you for listening to this uh, presentation. If you have any questions, please let me know.